Uh, welcome to those who are there to today's webinar. My name is Marluz Reining and I'll be your facilitator for today's session on the One Planet Living Framework. And today we are sponsored by Naturel Bets. They are a proudly South African company. And in 1994, the owners began a long search to create a utterly natural mattress. In South Africa, South Africa is a country blessed with one of the world's largest populations of merino sheep, well known for their wonderful properties of their fine wool. The owners started using merino wool in the beds, which they used as a barrier between the off-gassing polyurethanes and the sleeper. So in 2008, they discovered a way to completely get rid of any urethanes and solvents in bed um, by introducing organic latex. As a family business, they love the combination of wool and organic latex, which is genuinely sustainable, does not harm the planet, plants or animals. Natural materials are used in the bed and are all certified, either natural or organic, and the certificates are available on their website. So it's 100% organic natural latex, it's 100% certified natural wool, 100% certified natural fabric, which is a combination of bamboo, viscose and cotton with eucalyptus fibers. And there are absolutely no petrochemicals involved in making the bed. The beds are made to last for at least 30 years and the wool is guaranteed for a lifetime of the purchaser. The ethos is to create wholly natural products of a traceable organic origin, which are socially justifiable and ethically legitimate in the biochain. Earth to earth and dust to dust. So if you're keen to join the flock of thousands who have already benefited from natural uh, products, please visit naturalbeds.com on their website and they can help you further. Thank you for sponsoring the session. We're really happy for your support. All right, so this webinar is brought to you by the Regenerative Collaborative of South Africa. We are a voluntary organization and we advocate a regenerative future for all and create awareness around regenerative buildings and design. We like to do that in a collaborative way as we feel like we can achieve so much more collaboratively. Okay. If you want to join our team, our group of people organizing these events, uh, you're more than welcome or just follow us on Facebook or LinkedIn. Our main activities are we organizing these events. We do efficacy and education around regenerative design in South Africa. We're creating awareness and we're trying to post as much as we can around the topic on social media. All our previous events are also recorded and still available for CPD points. So if you are in need of CPD points, have a look on the website of Greenet, www.greenet.co.za, and you'll find all our previous events there. And then before we dive into the speakers, we've had some really good ideas over the last couple of weeks around topics for these webinar events. So feel free to get to the link that is here and I'll share it later on the chat as well. If you're keen to provide us with a topic uh, for one of these webinars, we, we really appreciate your feedback and you stand a chance to win 500 rand if the topic makes it to the, to the webinar. Right, so for today, let's dive into the exciting stuff. We have two guest speakers here or two guest presenters. We have Sarah and Chloe from One Planet Living, or One uh, One Planet Living. I want to say One Living Planet, but it's One Planet, One Living Planet, One Planet Living. Sarah comes from a nursing background before pivoting to uh, honors in nature, nature conservation and a master's in environmental science. She spent some years overseas in the UK with um, Bioregional Development Group and came back in in 2000 to do environmental consultancy for Bioregional, then went back to the UK again and came back to South Africa and started um, Bioregional South Africa to further use the One Planet fra Living Framework here in South Africa. She's been working with quite a number of projects from dealing with property developers to also more social projects supporting homeless, uh, homeless men, food growing and composting initiatives, as well as co-facilitating the Durban Climate Change Partnership. 
She currently leads the Green Economy Workstream of Itiquini's Economic Council and is passionate about sustainable education. We also have Chloe here. She graduated from the hotel school in Lucerne before working in London in hotel asset management and advisory services. She then decided to specialize in sustainability and, and pursue a master's degree. Since joining One Planet, Chloe has been co-creating sustainability strategies with companies from different sectors and providing support for clients using the OnePlanet.com platform. She's currently in Italy, so calling in from a different part of the world. <laughs> Welcome, Chloe. Welcome, Sarah. I believe you guys are going to start off with the presentation and then we're going to get it and make it very interactive. We're going to share a link to a whiteboard where we're all going to post stuff. So be prepared, listen well to the presenters and the guidance that they're giving you. Okay, I'm looking forward. I'm handing over to you, Sarah. Thanks very much. Perhaps one of the first things I should say is that I sleep on a latex mattress. Yay! Uh, oh, <laughs> nice. And I have done for a number of years, but Naturel, I think I purchased it before you were even in existence, but I can thoroughly vouch for, for latex mattresses. That's great. Um, <laughs> so thank you for your sponsorship. So thank you everyone who has joined us today uh, and are interested in this topic. Um, I think Marluce has given uh, a good introduction really of today, but just to recap, we're going to introduce to you about One Planet Living and creating using the One Planet Living framework to create what's known as a sustainability action plan. We're going to highlight a few case studies here in South Africa and around the world, and then we're going to introduce you to an online digital tool known as oneplanet.com, which makes it easy for you to create your plans online. And that's going to be the little demonstration that we're going to do uh, to show you how it works. So again, as Malus alluded to, we're a public benefit organization, been in South Africa now since 2008. And we do uh, a number of different things, but primarily our purpose is to promote uh, the use of the One Planet Living Framework because we believe so strongly that it's the most holistic approach to sustainability that there is, and I'm going to tell you more about that. But we've also been involved in advisory committees. We, we very much believe in collaboration as well. So we work with universities, we work with schools, we work with the municipality, we work with businesses, uh, and um, we get involved in, in giving training and workshops, as well as providing advisory services and managing um, processes such as the Climate Change Partnership and Enterprise Development Programs, etc. So our interests and fields are many, but of course, we always um, relate them back to uh, One Planet Living. And quite simply, what is this concept of One Planet Living? We believe it's very good to have a vision. And our vision is a world where everyone everywhere lives happy, healthy lives within the limits of the planet, leaving space for wildlife and wilderness. Uh, and it's purposefully quite uh, uh, simple and hopefully aspirational that everyone would agree that that is a, a great aspiration that they would like to have. And of course, now more than ever is the time to act. I think the last few years have been the most tumultuous, certainly in my lifetime, um, beginning with COVID, wildfires, uh, now heat waves. Of course, in Etiquini, where I live, we've had civil unrest, we've had floods. Uh, more than ever, times are changing very fast. And um, now is the time to start doing things differently. And I believe time for true systems change. Um, there is no planet B. So as I mentioned, One Planet Living is a global vision. It's a sustainability framework of 10 principles, which I'll introduce to you shortly. And it's an initiative with a recommended process to follow to create this thing known as a sustainability action plan. And the science that underpins One Planet Living is something known as ecological footprinting. And as you can see here, um, around about the mid 19 or the early uh, 1970s, um, uh, the, the earth went into overshoot in terms of its ecological footprint. And what is ecological footprint? Essentially, it's the amount of land and sea required by us as humankind um, to sustain us, give us food and provide us with well-being and, and crops and, and timber um, to build the world we need, but also, of course, to absorb our wastes, our emissions, uh, the waste that we take to earth, to landfill. 
And of course, a big component of it is the carbon emissions from fossil, fossil fuel burning. And that's what you can see uh, in this diagrammatic here. So what is, how do we break down ecological footprinting? It's possible, it's an organization known as Global Footprint Network, who every four years produce a report, which gives details the ecological footprint of every country in the world, actually. But look, taking it a, a broadest perspective, they have worked out that there's about 11.2 billion hectares of productive land on Earth. That is land that can be used for growing crops and for growing on uh, and sea that we can harvest, um, you know, uh, uh, food from. And if you divide this figure of utilizable land by humankind and divided by the population of humankind, that means a global fair share per person it sits at about 1.6 global hectares in order for us to sustain ourselves as humankind. But the truth of the matter is that, of course, we're an overshoot. So if you look at this graph, um, the average person in the UK, for example, is leading a three-planet lifestyle. Their, their eco footprints at about 5.6 global hectares. In North America, people are leading a five-planet lifestyle. In places like the UAE, they're up to a nine-planet lifestyle. Um, so really, you know, it's making no sense because we've only got one planet. Um, South Africa there, of course, is uh, just over two planets, but of course, it hides big discrepancies between the rich and the poor in this country with the majority of people, of course, living well below a one-planet lifestyle and only the more wealthy people living uh, akin to a European lifestyle. And there are a number of countries, of course, who still live below uh, a, a global fair share, but mainly that's due to poverty uh, or living in parts of the world where there are large tracts of land that are desert, etc. And, of course, the aspiration, even these countries, is really to is the Western way of the world and the Western model in terms of overconsumption and over resource use in truth. The good thing about using ecological footprint as a, a scientific index is that we can break it down and look at what makes up the uh, ecological footprint for a different for each country. So, for example, in the UK, you can see that quite a large part of the footprint uh, has to do with energy and materials involved in housing, as well as transport, food, and then following on from that, consumer goods, um, um, public and private sector services and capital investment. So it gives one an idea as to where to start working on um, um, how to influence your ecological footprint to try and achieve a one planet way of living. As part of a project I was involved in a couple of years ago now, we did um, some research and attempted to get an ecological footprint for Etiquini. And interestingly enough, you'll see that we're at about a one and a half planet lifestyle uh, in Etiquini. Uh, and perhaps what will shock you most is that um, the um, predominant part, or at least half of what makes up our, our footprint in Etiquini has to do with food, the global hectares to do with food, followed by transport and consumables and waste. Uh, and most people will find that surprising, but uh, if you go into any supermarket these days and you go and look at where our food comes from, if you're not conscientious about buying fatties and moni's pasta from South Africa, you'll find your pasta's coming from Italy, your rice is coming from India, etc. So uh, food and consumables is a big part of our footprint, um, as, is, as is transportation, of course, because we don't have uh, a, a very good or equitable public transport system. So, of course, our target is to how to achieve a one planet lifestyle again, such that we can uh, lead sustainable and happy, healthy lives, but without having to wear the hair shirt or to, you know, only eat lentils. How, how can we can we create sustainable communities and organizations which um, are one planet living? Um, friendly. Uh, and I just wanted to pop this slide in here. This is Bed Z in South London, where One Planet Living was born. It was the offices of Bioregional uh, UK, uh, and this was built out. The first residents moved in in 2002, and at the time was heralded as the UK's uh, greenest housing development with a social housing component. And you can see a very unique ventilation system with the wind cars on the roof and photovoltaic uh, panels, etc. Um, but BedZ really was the impetus for our learning uh, about One Planet Living. And we learned, we always say, as much how not to do things as how to do things with the building out of BedZ. Um, so a couple of years on from building BedZ, this One Planet Living framework of 10 principles was born. Um, uh, and here they are. And we believe, as I said earlier, it's the most holistic encapsulation of what 
true sustainability is about. It addresses all three aspects of sustainability, so to do with economic environment and, of course, social equity. It, it speaks to the natural resource limits of our one planet that we have. And we hope that irrespective of where you are in whichever part of the world, um, they are easily understandable principles to respond to the current ecological and climate challenges that we do have. Perhaps zero carbon is the only more tricky one to understand. But of course, if you break that down to energy efficiency and use of renewables, then you understand what zero carbon is. Um, but we believe that sustainability uh, has certainly got to get more accessible to all. We want not only uh, those educated ones to understand what sustainability is about, but we need everyone to understand now what true sustainability is about. And hence, we believe our framework is accessible to the majority of people. If we break down the principles a little bit more in detail, so health and happiness is designing climate resilient homes and buildings and communities that promote healthy habits in terms of lifestyle, in terms of exercising, um, equity in local economy, be fair, support local businesses and affordable housing. Culture and community is to boost community by creating shared spaces and develop uh, a culture of sustainable living. Land and nature has to do with creating a connection with nature again, particularly with people, and give it room to thrive in watch whichever uh, development you're involved with. Sustainable water, I believe, uh, speaks for itself. Water efficient appliances and rainwater harvesting, no more important than in South Africa, of course, where we, uh, a lot of our country is facing drought in the coming years. There are two tough nuts on this next slide, of course, in the South African context, and that's sustainable transport, travel and transport, and zero carbon energy. But fortunately, ESCOM is playing into our hands in uh, South Africa with load shedding and the grid being stretched and our, our fossil fuel capacity no longer meeting the needs of our population. So all of this is good news in terms of making sure that we aim for net zero carbon and achieve it. And it looks more and more as though this is going to have to be the route we go. Travel and transport, again, is a difficult one, as I say, because public transport has been so poorly catered for with our past history. Um, but again, it's reducing the need to travel and then making sure green travel is always an easy option uh, for communities to access. Another principle is local and sustainable food, speaking to the food principle earlier and the footprint, which shows that we need to promote more plant-based protein in our diet choices and provide space to grow food. Because as most of us, given audience, will already know, red meat, of course, uh, uh, is, is a big component of our, our food footprint. Then there's materials and products, cutting down on embodied carbon and materials and always res sourcing responsibly. And then the last one, zero waste, thinking circularity. It's a hot topic now, of course, green economy, circular economy. There's no such things as waste. We have to view waste more and more as a resource. So those are our 10 principles. And the process we take when we work with organizations, schools, whoever it is, uh, with regard to action planning is, is this convoluted diagram that you see here. But quite simply, we always look at any given context and do a context analysis to gather the current status quo of the, of the business or the organization. And then we start working together with them to co-create a compelling vision for what they want to achieve and what outcomes and actions they might take to achieve their vision. And we like to bring a lot of accountability into our actions as well by saying who, when, and what is the budget allocated to that, because accountability is key, of course. You can have a very good plan, but if you don't have any accountability to it, then it actually doesn't have any teeth. And of course, indicators, we all know the adage of you cannot um, manage what you don't measure. We have to measure and track progress in order to see that our indicators are, are working effectively. And there are a number of ways of doing that, of course, not only um, with qualitative indicators, but also with quantitative indicators. And so at the end of this process, we get to a plan which is written up. And then, of course, the fun part is implementing and delivering on that. And then year on year, um, um, we review that plan and update it uh, to make sure that it stays current. So the approach um, is to see and respond to the connections uh, um, that the One Planet principles provide. Uh, for example, what you eat will determine your health, how you travel, could also determine your health if you're spending long hours sedentarily sitting in a car as opposed to walking, etc. So 
One Planet Living helps us to see those connections. It inspires change through a hearts and minds approach. And we say that because a lot of people's decisions, research has shown, 90% of the decisions people make is done um, through um, a gut feeling uh, before a logical feeling. Uh, and um, we find that the One Planet Living softer principles of health and happiness, equity and local economy, all speak to that sort of warm and fuzzy approach um, that um, um, people respond to well. We do have goals and guidance documents. We don't believe in prescriptive standards. And we do focus on outcomes and actual performance, again, rather than perhaps negatively marking a company or organization because they haven't achieved a particular target. We have uh, a desired outcome, but again, um, um, we, we encourage a long step trajectory in order to achieve those outcomes uh, without penalizing um, you know, specific targets along the way. And globally, we're getting more and more uh, recognized leadership for pushing um, this aspect of systemic change, deep systemic change. Uh, and the fact that One Planet Living does complement other frameworks and certification systems. So we really believe it is a guiding star for the future and, and our long term vision. And very briefly, there's a map just to show you um, how One Planet Living, where it is around the world. We're on all five um, uh, continents at this point. We're going for global domination. We're not shy to say that. Um, uh, a a follow on to uh, the bedside exemplar that I showed you was one Brighton in the UK that's on the south coast of the UK, 172 apartments um, that, for example, by being built up, set the low carbon concrete standard for, for London in 2012. Uh, uh, and also um, uh, had many other um, aspirational things such as um, uh, having training, on-site training for every person who went onto the site in terms of what One Planet Living meant. There was a healthy canteen on site, so we had a number of construction workers reply, reporting back to us that they were healthier now by eating at the canteen than they'd ever been before. And family members were noticing as they lost weight and started eating more healthily again. So lots of positive aspects. Um, uh, and One Brighton to this day is run on 100% renewable energy. It's got at least a minimum of 20% energy cost savings to residents. Uh, the flats themselves still are, are, are retailing above bench and, and um, reporting above benchmark profits uh, when they are sold on and they have a waiting list of residents who want to move into these apartments. And again, um, the most interesting point here is that uh, we have one couple who reported that after 18 months of moving into One Brighton, they lost 35 kilograms in weight between them because they sold their car and they suddenly started walking and using public transport and they subscribed to the local veg box delivery scheme uh, and that enabled them to live more healthily. Um, so that's very a good news story in terms of now um, making the linkage between sustainability and, and, and health. Uh, another big uh, exemplar in the UK that's being built out at the moment, actually, the first 400 homes have, have just been moved into, but in time it's going to be 6,000 homes, Northwest Bista, which is near Oxford in the UK, and it's really going to be the UK's first eco town and zero, uh, uh, largest true zero carbon development. And it's got, again, all sorts of innovation under sustainable transport, a bike loan scheme, a community bus service, an electric car club. And there's a local school on site, which is creating its own One Planet Action Plan in terms of how um, it's going to achieve sustainability. There's another little picture of um, what the homes are looking like with their photovoltaics on the roof. Um, another one I just wanted to briefly highlight is Village Nature in Paris, just outside of Paris. It's an extension of Euro Disney. Uh, and a wonderful holiday destination uh, to go to with this one planet ethos. Um, um, and I certainly, if you're ever lucky enough to go overseas, that would be the place to go on holiday. Bringing it closer to home, um, our, our, our biggest uh, user in throughout Africa now actually is Singita, a boutique uh, a hotel chain who've got land holdings not only in Tanzania but also in Rwanda, Zimbabwe, um, in South Africa as well actually and they've been using the One Planet 
living ethos now for five years on all of their properties and, and new properties as they um, um, develop. And it really has had uh, remarkable um, you know, successes for them. So I've just flagged up here at the Serengeti development that they have. Since 2012, they've had a 90% reduction in plastic waste uh, just by creating the outcome of zero waste and figuring out what um, actions they take and how to diminish their waste. And there have been other big savings there, as you can read as well. Um, so we acknowledge that it's a journey. A lot of this doesn't happen overnight. Um, um, but it's good, to, it's good to at least get going and, and start doing it. This is a, a, a smaller exemplar here in Durban. Actually, it's a small creche I worked with just before COVID. We had a very limited budget. We, we decided on doing just at least one action under each of the 10 principles to see how far we could go with this creche. And we used local contractors, lo local building suppliers. We managed to get in some uh, waterless and viral toilets, rainwater harvesting. We refurbished the windows. We <clears throat> used uh, um, rubber floor tiles uh, uh, made from reclaimed car tires. We, we set up a food garden. It really was a wonderful little project, which again is going very well to this day, and was just a whole new way of uh, people looking at how we approach this this, this project work. And so that was a fun project. Uh, again, more recently, we've been involved in Durban, has been one of four cities around the world, looking up looking to scale One Planet Living to uh, a, a city and a more regional um, point of view. And these are some, um, sorry, not the best slide, but these are some of the organizations we have been working with in Durban who have been trialing the use of One Planet Living to create their own action plans. More specifically now, um, I, I've slightly zoned in this year to uh, supporting a, a local food garden and the circularity of um, uh, using food waste from a nearby hotel to create compost on site, using organic waste from the municipality, creating compost and then using it in this food garden, which is being run currently by homeless uh, men. And we've brokered in um, some good relationships there in the form of our Durban University of Technology horticulture students or get a gaining work experience there. We're hoping to get an agriceta graduate on site, etc. Uh, and the big impetus there, of course, is to look at food waste, which is a big, it's a big issue in our country um, that nobody really is addressing and is a big opportunity in terms of the circularity space. Um, Molly spoke about the uh, Green Economy Council. What are the, the good ideas out there that we can take uh, to the green space and start implementing within our city? So that's quite an exciting um, um, thing that's happening. We've got lots of free resources for people. I don't want to too busy the slide, but I'm sure you can access a lot of these resources um, when you uh, uh, receive the, the presentation. And we offer training. We've got training sessions happening in September or October. There's an early bird discount. There's a link there for you to register on. Um, so you'd be welcome to, to join us on our One Planet training and we'll take you through what it's about and how you can start creating a sustainability action plan for your own organization. And my last slide here is just to say one of the other innovations that's happened over the last couple of years with the One Planet Living Framework is the development of OnePlanet.com, which is this online action planning tool that Chloe is going to demonstrate now and speak to a little more. So I'm going to stop there. Thanks, Sarah. Is, if anybody has a question, please raise your hand or put it in the chat. I have a question. Can you sort of, how does it link to the, you know, your normal ESG development, like if a company wants to do their ESG strategy, for example, can they use the One, One Planet uh, Living Framework to get there? Yeah, um, we, we tend to find that, frankly, ESG can be quite confusing and quite a minefield uh, and, mm. and, and fairly esoteric in, ten, in terms of only the sustainability consultants or sustainability managers, you know, tend to know what it's about. That said, you know, obviously it's the route that a lot of corporates are going to. So we always say we would advocate, you know, rather creating a, a one planet plan and then under each of the specific principles, then you can bring in your matrices or your ESG uh, uh, tracking and monitoring as it as it fits under one planet living. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, I mean that 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 is the minefield that that we are faced with in the world at the minute. The, the, you know, it was GRI reporting. Of course, mm. sustainable development goals are very popular here. A lot of people, I think, can get bogged down as to well, what do I do? What is the um, yeah? You know, what should I be doing? And again, we always hope that One Planet Living is a simplistic way that actually encompasses everything, but but is that much more accessible? Yeah, I people. think it's very it's very. I mean, you can link the two quite well together and, and you have all the indicators. So that could then influence your ESG strategy as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Good. So I'm going to present now to you One Planet, which is a company which span off from Value Regional, which Sarah just presented. And the company One Planet has created the, pro the platform OnePlanet.com, which um, we're going to demo as well at the end. So One Planet, who are we? We are a sustainability technology company. We create software solutions to manage and implement sustainability. And we work with um, companies from different industries, local governments, schools, and non-profit organizations. And we come from more than 35 years of sustainability. As you can see, uh, maybe you recognize some of the pictures on the right that Sarah just presented, like Village Nature in Paris or One Brighton. So what context are we in? Um, we're in a context which focuses mainly on issues we have found where people want to solve problems. So we want to so solve the climate emergency, increasing crime rate, childhood obesity, fuel poverty. And what we bring in with One Planet is to try to change that view to focus on outcomes instead. So what do we want to achieve? We want to achieve 100% renewable energy, um, increase active transport, better air, bringing to net zero, more and better local jobs. Um, and so you probably recognize that this is systems thinking um, and that from systems thinking, um, collaboration is enhanced. While talking with clients and like looking around us, we have also seen that many companies really struggle implementing true sustainability. And here are a few of the challenges that um, are recurring. For example, that ESG or sustainability, sustainability is increasingly complex, which is also something that models you just mentioned and Sarah answered. Um, in part because reporting takes so much time sustainability has become more of a tick boxing exercise rather than really implementing actions. There's also a pressure on budgets, which means we need to focus resources. Um, often departments or stakeholders struggle to collaborate together. And so we need to find ways to do that better. Um, and the climate emergency we're currently in um, can also be solved uh, or cannot be solved without a just transition. So not only focusing on the environmental side of it, but taking into account the social and equity side. So for us at One Planet, sustainability means understanding the interconnectedness of our world. So if we look at this little diagram starting on the left, if we build compounds um, where people require cars because there's no public transport, it's too far from public transports, then we support the oil industry, which uh, is linked to climate change, as we all know. The oil industry also produces plastic, which um, we know end up in the ocean. And then microplastics are eaten by the fish, for example, and other wildlife. If we choose to eat those fish, then we also eat the microplastics. And there's evidence from recent studies that um, in the UK, about 60%, I think, of the people had evidence of microplastics in their bodies. And that uh, led to, of course, um, bad health uh, problems, including in, uh, inflammation. And of course, the wildlife also eat those fish. So for example, the penguins who then also in, um, eat this plastic, and that is really bad. So we can see how the decisions we take here really have a wider range of influence than what you might initially think. So starting from there, we wanted to come up with a solution, and that is our whatplanet.com platform, which enables you to visualize, manage, measure, and report interconnected data. I'll go now in a bit more detail on the slides about the platform before showing it live to you and doing a little interactive exercise. So the key characteristics of the OnePlanet platform. 
Um, it allows you to create actionable plans through a coherent logical framework approach. You can use multiple frameworks, so whether you report in the sustainable development goals or One Planet Living or maybe Briam or LEAD, the platform allows you to do all of that. It also allows you to view your data in different ways. So you can see the pictures on the right. There is a mind map. There is a document view, a table view, which is more like an Excel spreadsheet. And you can also publish it on our website. Um, as I mentioned before, by seeing the connections of everything we implement, that, impl uh, that enables system thinking and really enhances collaboration through the connected plans and between stakeholders. And we have created a simple, a simple method of reporting and automatically generate the reports. So if we look at point one first, create actionable plans through a coherent logical approach. So one, we studied many, many sustainability strategies and plans, and we realized that they all had a similar structure, although with different um, terminology. So what we kept is um, outcome, so what you want to achieve, and then the action, what you'll implement to achieve those targets, and finally the indicators, so how you're going to track your impact and your progress towards reaching the outcomes. And having this very easy structure helps you communicate your ambitious sustainability vision and really simplify strategies, making it easy to grasp for your other stakeholders. Um, number two, the multiple frameworks. So um, you can see on the right the different pictures. The mind map is always the same, but the colors change. And that's because um, you can see in the legend that the framework changes. So you can see the exact same data, but in uh, One Planet Living, which I mentioned, or B Corp, or Well, all at the click of a button. And that helps you tailor your data to your audience and make it easy to report in different frameworks, depending which certification you're trying to go for. And therefore, it saves you time and simplify your workflow. Um, multiple ways of viewing and managing the data. So as I mentioned before, you can see the same data, the click of a button, either in a mind map, a table view with rows and columns, or a document view where you can then download this document in different format and that's your report done just there in two seconds. Um, so that all that data is then uh, centrally managed with different views according to the specific tasks as well as pref personal preference, whether you're more a visual person or a more logical person who needs rows and columns. Number four, it enables systems thinking. Um, so by using the One Planet platform, you can invite stakeholders to collaborate to your account and you can then visualize the data from your entire value chain, which we call your ecosystem. You can also understand which stakeholders, departments, customers, suppliers are connected to your ecosystem or um, connect internally with other departments, projects or plans. You can see the image on the right at the center, we have the asset management company, so the one which owns um, the account and has the vision. And then this asset management company has shared its vision with all the different stakeholders around there. Um, for the color coding, the lines that are purple means that they're internal department for the company, so we can see its own finance department, for example. And then the green dotted line are external stakeholders. So maybe they outsource space to the XYZ gym or they work with a renewable energy company and so on. So the benefit of this um, system thinking in, with the platform is that it, it engages staff and stakeholders, enables collaboration and minimizes this risk by being joined up as you make, can make sure that everyone is working towards the same outcomes. Um, so we have a big emphasis on collaboration as well and collaborate through connected plans. Um, so you can create your vision, which will um, have shared outcome and shared indicators. They're called shared because it, um, those ones from the vision can be adopted into other plans. So when I was talking about alignment before, this is then how it happens. You invite stakeholders or internal departments to adopt 
your outcomes and indicators. That's how you all work towards the same goals. We can see here on the image that uh, by clicking on the energy efficiency circle, which is an outcome, uh, we can see that these four plans have adopted this outcome and are also working towards being uh, more energy efficient. And then regarding reporting and automating reports, so we have a node navigator, which um, allows you to easily find the nodes um, or the indicator where you have to input your data for reporting. You can also bookmark or add your favorites. And then at the click of, of a button, you can uh, generate your report. And this reduces reporting overhead, saves time and builds capacity to increase ROI. Um, so I will stop here for a moment in, in case there are any questions. Otherwise, we'll go on and move on to the more interactive part where we'll create a plan together. Um, I can okay. see the chat. So I don't know if there's any question in the chat. Oh, there is a question. A question from uh, Gemma. How well does it work for small projects? For example, the crash that you presented, Sarah. You know, I can only say it always works extremely well, <laughs> irrespective of the size of the project. And in the case of this project, we were largely budget driven, as with any project. Uh, and so people said, you know, you're mad. You can't use One Planet Living on this. It's, it's you haven't, you know, there's no capacity. But we did. We just thought, come on, under each principle, what is one outcome that we'd like to achieve and see if we can do it? And we managed to find one under each one. For example, we were working with another NPO who walked away who walked away from the project because they wanted to use their own contractor who who was based 60 kilometers away and i said no but under local economy and equity we use a local contractor so that influenced the work stream so that npo left and said well we can't you know work on this budget and i found local contractors to use uh, so again the mo the money was kept in the local economy so once you start thinking in this way of 10 plan 10 One Planet Principles, it's a really holistic way of operating, no matter how big or small the project is. Right. There's a there's a, another question from uh, Maria. Um, is it free? And I would I think she refers to the OnePlanet.com. Is it free or do you need to subscribe? What are the costs related to that? Very good question. So you can sign up for free. Um, on our website, which is oneplanet.com. And then you will have um, a good um, overview of what the system can do. And then if you wanna add some more nodes, for example, or more plans or have this vision plan, then the, there are different upgrades. They're priced very differently. The maximum uh, or the software with, or the platform with all the um, characteristics is, 5,000 pounds a year or 500 per month. But that is the platform with all characteristics. Otherwise, it starts from 20 pounds. If you're on the platform with a few plans. So, and again, we've got some schools locally who are using it for 1,200 rand a year, for example. Schools and NPOs, we, we, we give 80% discount to because we want more people to use it. Uh, uh, but businesses, obviously, we have to sustain ourselves as well. So we charge a more corporate rate. Um, but, but even that is 500 US dollars. So not unachievable, I don't think, for the corporate space. Mm. No. Absolutely not. So if you click on the link that Marlowe's um, put, it in the ch put in the chat, you will be directed to a mural whiteboard, which will look like this. Uh, you don't have to create an account or anything. You can just sign in, um, enter as a guest, and you will be given a random animal name. I'll give people a few minutes to come here, and this will use the mural to make the activity interactive. So you will be able to share your ideas. While you do this, I'll um, quickly introduce Mural in case someone hasn't used it yet. So this is a tool to gather in insights from different people. And so in this case, what we want to do as an activity is to create an action plan for a new children's home. Um, so the action plan will use the One Planet building blocks, which you can recognize. So the outcomes, what you want to achieve, 
the actions, what you what you will implement to achieve those outcomes, and in the indicators to track impact and progress. Um, so you can zoom in and out um, in on mural. I've created some little post-it notes. So you can simply click one on a post-it note and then start typing. And then once you have uh, typed, you can move the post-it notes um, above or to another place. Um, and I have also put here a reminder of the One Planet Living Principles that Sarah presented. Um, so what we propose is that you add your objectives or outcomes, actions and indicators on the mural. And I will then simultaneously map them on the platform. And so you will see this living plan starting to take life. So whenever you're ready, if you have any ideas, of course, Marlos and Sarah, you're more than welcome to participate as well. In the Is it big context. enough for people? And are, are people clear on what they need to do? You, you just need to start thinking you can choose one principle or two principles and just decide of an outcome. We're building a new children's home, a new orphanage for children, uh, and it's going to be a new building. Um, so choose any of your principles that speak to you and uh, just think quite simply what, what is an outcome we might want to achieve for this new building, what action can we take to achieve it, and is there an indicator we can use to, to measure progress. If you can just write that down uh, and then Chloe will start mapping it on the platform just to show you how easy it is to use the platform and get the connections going between um, different principles. And there is no way to start. You can either start with the outcome, so think in this context of building a new children's home, what do we want to achieve overall related to, for example, health and happiness so of the future residents of this home, what do we wish for them, an awesome playground, love that. So as you're starting with the outcomes, I'm going to start and map those. I'm going to use the One Planet Living framework. As you can see, it's very easy. I just click on the icon, type the name, I love the outcomes that you've put. So I've already mapped growing food for the children to eat, no water leaves the site, no utility bills from ESCOM, zero waste. I'm gonna type awesome playground. Although that could be more like an action. Maybe you're gonna move this to an action. Maybe the outcome for that would be happy children. And then for the children to be happy, they would have, of course, many things, but one of them could be an awesome playground. an action of solar panel, put PV panels on the roof, so that will be zero carbon energy. Oh, I love the solar cooking stove. I've used solar cooking stoves before. We have one at the office, but we actually have to... 
put it together again and use it. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I think it's a really nice slow life. Mm. I Um, Sarah, what are we doing this? Would you, would you normally uh, recommend this for like new buildings or for any existing buildings where you want to improve your sustainability or it doesn't even relate to buildings all the time, right? Yeah, it doesn't even necessarily need to relate to buildings all the time. I've actually written myself a, a, a personal action plan just for my life, <laughs> really. Mm. Um, but, but of course, with new buildings, it's always not easier, but you have a clean slate. Uh, um, um, so, so you can apply it to any given scenario. Is the is the is the short answer, which is fantastic. And again, sometimes we've had people say, you know, this is an ethos that comes from overseas. How is it applicable in in southern southern Africa, for example, or Africa? And we say, you know, the ten principles are very generic. You can use them in any given scenario. You really just have to examine what each principle is and then think, well, in this particular situation. So, for example, in KZN at the minute, it is likely we will be uh, one of the provinces in this country where we won't be drought stricken. But of mm. course, places like Cape Town, Northern Cape, <laughs> elsewhere are very much going to be suffering from um, from drought. So, you know, in their plans, they'd have to look at perhaps greater quantity of rainwater harvesting, whereas in KZN, we'll have to be looking at uh, more flood attenuation. And storm water, yeah. Yeah, and storm water control. So, <clears> so <throat> you know, you, you really tailor make it, use it to tailor make it for according to what your scenario is. And uh, normally, how, if, when you have your clients, how do you start the process? Do you start with a mural like we're doing today and you have a very interactive session? Or how do you, how do you normally, like, get to your plan? Yeah, we usually... Um, uh, you know, start with workshops. We like to um, workshop in person as much as possible to introduce what, you know, the concept of One Planet Living and what the imperative is for doing it. Um, and then we do set small tasks. Um, again, we, you know, again, just to get them thinking in the One Planet lifestyle. So in the current building that we're sitting in, can that particular group you know, start drawing up a One Planet Action Plan. And um, we give another group another scenario to say, well, you know, you're building a new house. Can you think of what you're going to do in your new house? So again, it just starts the wheels and, and the thinking uh, using the methodology. And then obviously we have to start addressing um, whatever we've been engaged um, to work with them on. We usually get engaged as part of the project team. So always, um, you know, working with the project members to say, well, Right, under One Planet Living, can we allocate a champion to each of the principles? So, for example, um, the civil engineers all, all do the sustainable materials, but mm. um, uh, of course, the hydrologists will do the water bit, etc. You think of who's relevant, whose domain uh, deals with this particular principle, and then we get them thinking differently, you, you, you know, about now understanding what One Planet Living means, how can you in incorporate um, um, the ethos into this? The, the design for whatever the project is. Um, mm. And of course, the beauty of working as part of the project team, then you start, you know, this cross collaboration that's, that sometimes doesn't happen very easily. Um, uh, and of course, the beauty of the platform now has been that anyone, anytime can log on to the particular plan that's being worked on and contribute, you know, their little bit. And then even during COVID, you know, we were able to work online and still have project team meetings whereby we look at the plan online and say, well, is that, you know, really meeting the achievement that we need to achieve, et cetera. Um, so, so, yeah, there are many different ways. We can do it online if people are from mm. afar or we, can, or we can have actual physical workshops, which is always nice to do too. Um. Are you getting enough information there, Chloe? For uh, yes, looks. I think it's very it's great what the participants, what you're all writing on mural. Maybe think of something regarding the local economy. Local How economy. can the new children's home help the local economy? One of the perks of the One Planet Living framework as well is that it allows you to do a quick gap analysis 
by noticing um, which area have maybe been less developed than others. Yes, like this one, use local contractors from five kilometers from the site. Local economy. Oh, well, no, we had someone started writing an outcome about building materials. I think it was good. I didn't have time to add it on the platform. Create security through community ooh, through community participation. That's one for culture and community. I'm not sure if on your side you managed to both be on mural and see the screen that I'm sharing and the plan that we're creating on oneplanet.com. Perhaps if we just have five minutes more on mural and then um, you could just mm. share your screen with the One Planet plan, Chloe, that might be best so it's, people can see it. Mm -hmm. Of course. And then maybe sh show some examples of like, you doing it very quickly. <laughs> I, I try yeah, to, no, I'll, I'll I'll show try the system. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a, show a little tour of the platform. Mm. Yes, yeah, true that because I work with it every day, I'm quite used to it. <laughs> work quickly. Lots of ideas. I love that. That's how easy it should be. <laughs> Two more minutes, should we say? Mm -hmm. Are there any principles that are missing that we can encourage people to write up on? Mm, let me check. Travel and transport. Transport's always a hard one. Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> um, and, and land and nature. Okay. Although the plant vegetable fruits and trees, fruit trees, that could be borderline land and nature. Um, Sarah, yes. Well, do you do you have to become like if you want to guide your client through this framework? Do you have to become like a an accredited professional, or is it like you read the manual or and you take it on, or do we contact you and you're the only one in South Africa who can do it? Or... <laughs> yeah, um, we do have goals and guidance document, and we always just say to people start using the framework and and mm -hmm. see how you get on with it. Um, we are happy to be used as a, a consultant as well to come on board as, as part of the project team, as I mentioned. Um, and of course, you can, if you wanted to, you, you could use the One Planet Living Framework and not even use oneplanet.com. You could write a plan in Word or in Excel. Um, but of course, w once you see, and, and Kerry will demo it now, the versatility of um, the platform, we're finding companies are finding it more and more useful. Uh, mm. and, and as she said, it cuts down reporting time, it enables accessibility at any hour of the day or night by a whole project team, it eliminates emails and PDFs that are sent around, etc. Um, so we always just say, just start using it, but we obviously can be involved uh, as a consultant to try and um, guide you further and, and make sure that you're on the right track. And very often we can be involved, um, certainly in the first year as a, as a consultant basis, and then annually we just review once once the whole team has got on board and understands what the methodology is about, we just review annually uh, each plan and, and the updates that are done, again, to make sure that you know progress is being made and that there's no greenwashing happening. Mm. And, and do you like, is it like, a, do you have to get your plan certified or approved by, or? Well, yeah, again, ideally we like that. We do, we do mm. like it to be signed off by Bioregional because we do want this to be, um, you know, a, a, meaning, a meaningful methodology that is not just greenwash. Um, um, but that said, 
you know, it, it doesn't mean very much to have it signed off. You know, the, mm. the schools that are involved, for example, I just review their plans for a, a couple of hours, half a day, uh, uh, once a year, or else uh, we speak. So, um, but it is good to get that uh, sign off just to, yeah, such that we agree, particularly if you're going to uh, publicize the fact that you're using the One Planet framework by Bioregional, we, we like to maintain our integrity in terms of the brand. Um, mm. So um, there are certain limitations in terms of, you know, what branding you can use in terms of our logos, et cetera, et cetera, if you aren't going to be uh, accredited by us. Mm. Um, but as I said, that doesn't stop you from using uh, the framework, certainly as a trial. Yeah. And I've also seen it being used in, it was, I think it was an Australian project, as a sort of a brainstorming tool for um, a new building design where um, they used that, that the framework to come up with ideas for the, the goals that the building needed to achieve in the end, as okay. opposed to like a green building certification outcome that must that must have been one of the outcomes yes. but they use the framework to come up with as many ideas on how just yes. how this building could be um, yes. sustainable I, I think of course the slight challenge and that's when i was speaking to the holism is is one planet living is really not only a, a green building but a lifestyles approach mm. so you're sitting in a room of engineers and you start talking health and happiness and they look at you as if to say you're mad what are you talking about health and happiness but you start saying, well, is this a building that you would want to be in? Would you want your mother to live in this building? Mm. You know, what's going to make this building uh, appeal to to the people who use it? You know, how's it going to make it? How, how can we make it a healthier building? How can we uh, incorporate land and nature? And it's all things that traditionally, you know, the hardcore project team needn't necessarily think about that lifestyles component. But more and more, we know it is this lifestyles approach that's that's, you know, the whole package in terms of what sustainability is. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the ethos behind it. And as I say, yeah, you know, lifestyles are very important, as we saw with the slide that showed that, you know, 50% of our footprint has to do with food in South Africa. We start asking those slightly hard questions about, well, how many times a day are you eating meat? And do you need to mm. eat meat that many times a day? And perhaps you could have meat once a week and uh, uh, try a plant-based diet. And invariably, you know, that starts getting healthier people in the room and then they start reporting back on that and they start, uh, you know, passing that down to their families, etc. So it does have great uh, knock-on effects for people as well um, to start thinking in this way. Um, but it's a challenge. South African audience, you start saying, well, don't eat meat, you know, what do you mean? <laughs> um, um, but as long as you back it up with the evidence and the mm. science, which is showing actually how, you know, more and more rainforest has been cut down to grow food and soya for for animals so that for the animal protein etc um these are hard questions we need we need to start asking now um, mm -hmm. shall i show maybe everyone can yeah. come back to the platform great and if you haven't had a chance to see how it works so good so this is what we have creating together so to add an outcome action or indicator and then click on the relevant icon here on the right paste the name of the action. I'm going to just put it here so we can read, sell surplus food to locals or donate to homeless. I can add additional detail if I want, and then I can add the One Planet Living Principle. So this is linked to food. I then click on Add Action. The action is being added to the plan. I will then click on the link button here on the left and drag and drop from this action to the outcome I want to link it to. Um, so I ha what I have done here is link the outcomes, actions and indicators in a rather simple way with a central node, which is the central outcome we want to achieve, which is build a green building that someone put on mural. Then I linked by one planet principle. But if we do a bit of thinking, um, we can see that, for example, the outcome of zero waste could be linked to this action here which is drawing up a list of local contractors in the area. Um, so if we have local contractors or local, local suppliers, then maybe they can provide us produce with less um, packaging and therefore we reduce waste. 
So instead, I'm going to link this outcome to that action. And then we can see how the action of creating this list of local suppliers is both contributing to the outcome of zero waste and to um, the outcome of using local contractors within 50 kilometers of the site. And so this is then how you can um, relate to the different outcomes, actions and indicators together and start to understand how by implementing a, a certain action, it then influences different things within the plan. Um, I told you before during the presentation as well that you can change the frameworks, which we call lens. So you can see here these icons and the colors are related to the One Planet Living lens. But if I go here on the left, click on this icon, I can switch to, for example, the four Ps, which is a very simple framework with planet, people, um, purpose, and prosperity. And now I have the exact same data, um, except it's grayed out because it hasn't been mapped. So I then click on a node use local contractors, so I'm going to put that to probably purpose, click on save, and I have mapped one node into this um, framework. And so we can add any framework that you need, so we have many that are built in, like B Corp or Well or Lead, but if you have your own framework, which many times companies do, we can also build that and then you can see your data in that framework. Um, so of course, this is also a reporting platform. So if I click on an action, for example, creating skills development programs, apart from adding details or other information, I can see here that I have an additional action fields button. So regarding to this action, I can um, set a specific status to it, a completion date if I have, and I can also assign this to someone. So I'm going to assign Sarah as responsible for creating the skills development programs. And then what Sarah will do every now and then, depending on what um, she decides, if it's every month, every quarter, she will click here on additional data and she will then input um, her, the progress she has regarding this action. So maybe she has um, started screening for partners, partners. So you can add the little node, click add, and you can of course move the color bar, add some um, comment on the progress to help um, your collaborators or colleagues know how far you got. You then click on save data. Another way to add the data is to write a little story. So maybe the story of the first partner has agreed to join the journey. I can then add a description if I have one, add a picture, of course, click on save. Maybe I will add a picture. Let me see if I have a picture on my desktop. I will take a picture that, of course, you would add the logo of the partner or maybe a picture of their activity. But for the purpose of this exercise, we'll have this beautiful purple background. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also attach a source. So if you have maybe a list of the um, supp um, suppliers or partners that you want to work with on Excel, or on a Google Drive, then you can add this by clicking on add a new source. You can upload the file directly on the platform or add the link to be able to find that easily. And I think just because of time, perhaps you can just, if you put it back to the One Planet lens and then just show the report how you can change yes. the table Let's and document switch. view. And then. What time? Oh yes, very conscious of time. So mm -hmm. I, I can click here and change the view, which is something I showed you as well in the presentation. So I can see um, this data in a table view if I prefer to work in a table view and have um, a list of, there we go, the different action, clicking on the eye, I can edit that. 
I can go into document view and everything is automatically updated. So if you edit something in one view, it will automatically come in the other view. So we can find here the progress update that I just wrote and the story with a beautiful purple background. <laughs> And one last thing very quickly is this thing of the vision. So Sarah, or like the children's home can have a vision, which is then a different plan. And what can, I can do is open a list of all the shared outcomes from this vision and click on the ones that are relevant to me. I'm going to choose promote innovation, culture and youth, which makes sense with a new children's home. And then this outcome will appear in my plan here at the bottom. I'm going to link it. And so now this specific action plan of creating a new children's home is also working towards an outcome that the overall company, for example, might be working towards. Mm. That outcome has been brought in from the Etiquini Economic Council work stream. So then, you know, our municipal colleagues can start saying, oh, well, look, there's a new there's a new uh, school being built or a new children's home that being built that's adopted the outcomes that we want to achieve. Um, so you can start, you know, if we could get greater rollout and use between uh, uh, municipalities, businesses, schools, etc., you know, we could start creating these uh, one planet plans for cities, which actually show the uh, collaboration that's going on under each of the principles and who the role players are and um, it really adds to the transparency and uh, knowledge base, really, of, of all that's going on under each particular principle and area. Right. So this is it. I think I had the last slide with my contact details. If you need, you can also go on our website. Like I said, you can create a free account, then get in touch with us if you're interested in learning more. We also have videos and a help center on the website if you need to understand a bit more what the, plan the platform could bring to you and One Planet Living. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chloe. I thought that was a very fun interactive session today that was, yeah, I enjoyed it. And I think it's a, it's a valuable tool to, you know, create your sustainability plan. Thank you so much for the presentation. I'm going to close out um, now. We have some upcoming events, which are very exciting. Next month, we're going to talk about biomimicry. The month after, we're talking about alternative building materials. And then in October, we're trying to, we're doing a session around how you can use building simulation tools for a regenerative design. Again, if you have any ideas that you want us to feature on our webinars, just follow the link in the chat box. I've, I'll put the link in there. And again, if you want to join us as a volunteer, we don't require you to be an expert in anything. If you just want to add volunteer, like whatever skill you have, we, we're happy to have. Thank you to our sponsor for making this event happening and to, you know, to make sure that we can offer CPD points for free to all of the attendees. Thank you to our speakers. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chloe. I really enjoyed the session. It was it was great to do the interactive part and the mural exercise. I think the last thing I'd just like to say is we just encourage everyone just to try it, just to use mm. it. Look at the 10 principles and start mapping any project or plan that you have, again, using the principles, keeping them in mind and, and see what you think, see how it works for you. And there'll be some hard ones, perhaps uh, hard questions asked in terms of food or transport, energy. But, you know, that's what it's designed to do, really, to start us thinking, you know, in a in a more systems kind of collaborative way, uh, in a, in order to evolve the change that we we need to see over the next thirty years, if if we're going to have a a hope of <laughs> avoiding the climate catastrophe yeah. that we seem to be. Absolutely, and I also enjoy the fact that you can set your own goals. It's not like prescribed what you can do. So, like, if you want to focus on one particular thing, it's like you and you determine how you're going to get to that goal. Yes. I, I really yes. like that, and it's my. I think it actually encourages people to do more than what is required. If often when things are prescribed, you just do what is prescribed, and then you know not doing anything extra. And I think this this encourages people to think outside the box, set your own goals and actually, you know, making it meaningful for the 
for the type of project that you that you're applying it to. Mm -hmm. Great. And then lastly, thank you to my team. I absolutely value your inputs and your time that you're spending on the collaborative. Really appreciate it. And then just the last reminder that we have all our sessions uploaded on the GreenEd website. Uh, so have a look and you can uh, review previous sessions and we'll try to upload this one as quick as possible as well. Okay, and with that, I really like to thank you for attending and have a great evening. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, you too. Thanks. Take care. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.